Along with the chlorine, it's very important to monitor what's going on with the pH level of swimming pool water. The main reason is that the pH level of the swimming pool water has a big effect, a big impact on, on how effective the, um, the chlorine actually is. Because when chlorine uh, goes into swimming pool water, it produces um, two substances. It produces hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion. And this is actually what you're measuring when you're measuring free chlorine. You're measuring the total of these two substances. The thing is, though, that only one of those substances is the active disinfecting part of chlorine, and it's the hypochlorous acid. Now, when you add the chlorine into the pool and it uh, produces these two uh, different substances, the proportion of each that the chlorine produces uh, is different depending on what the pH level is. So take a look here. What we've got is the um, chlorine turning into uh, either hypochlorite ion or hypochlorous acid. And as I said, these two substances are what you're measuring when you are doing a DPD1 test on free chlorine. But as you can see, uh, according to what the pH level is, down here, as the pH level gets higher and higher, as the pH is moving up, you're getting more hypochlorite ion. But when the pH level goes down lower, you're getting the more uh, you're getting more hypochlorous acid. Now it's hypochlorous acid that we want. That's the disinfecting part of chlorine. Uh, the hypochlorite ion isn't really very effective. So for that reason, we don't want the pH level going too high. But the problem is, of course, that the um, the substances that are most commonly used to get chlorine uh, into the pool water are calcium hypochlorite and sodium hypochlorite, which themselves are very uh, high on the pH scale. Well, certainly sodium hypochlorite has got a pH level of around 13 and calcium hypochlorite has got a pH level of around about 11. So when you're introducing these chlorine donors into the pool to get some chlorine in there, those two substances, um, it doesn't matter, either one you're using is going to push the pH level up, which is why you always, if you're using these alkaline disinfectants, need to add acid um, substances, acidic substances to bring the pH level um, back down to a range between 7.2 and 7.6. Now, if you take a look at this graph, what you can uh, what you can see here is, a, is an orange line that represents the effectiveness of chlorine, and we've got a pH level um, down at the this bottom horizontal axis, and the effectiveness of chlorine percentage-wise on the uh, vertical axis here. Now, uh, at the moment, we're sort of at uh, pH 4, which obviously is way too low. You wouldn't want to keep a swimming pool at pH 4, but the chlorine would be very effective, but it would be uh, quite uncomfortable, obviously. And if I move this slider, we can see what happens as the pH level goes up to 5. The chlorine effectiveness is reduced a little bit, not much though, but a little bit. But then as we go further up the pH scale, it's coming down. The effectiveness of chlorine is coming down because as the pH level is increasing, we get in more of the hypochlorite ion and less of the hypochlorous acid. Um, so as we go up even further up the scale, then we're getting even more of that hypochlorite ion, even less of the hypochlorous acid. So at pH 7, the chlorine is 65% uh, effective. But look at what happens now when the pH goes up from 7 up to 8. You've got far less effectiveness. Uh, it's a dramatic drop between those two pH levels. So if you've got, um, if you had a pH test coming in at 8 and you had a free chlorine 
of let's say for example you had a free chlorine of uh, one which um, for a swimming pool would be um, a good level of chlorine but if it's a pH level of eight then only 25 percent of that one milligrams per liter of free chlorine is in uh, is being effective there's only a very small amount of hypochlorous acid that that chlorine is producing for us if the ph has been allowed to get that high so really the effect of that is 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 you haven't really got one milligram per liter of effective chlorine even though your dpd1 test might tell you that you've got one uh, milligram per liter of free chlorine what you've got to remember is the dpd1 tablet test tells you the amount of both substances hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion but it's only the hypochlorous acid that is the uh, effective part of chlorine and so that's why the two tests always tend to get performed together um, so you always do the uh, free uh, the free and the combined and the total chlorine uh, get those results but also you must always take that um, pH level into consideration so if the pH level goes high uh, if certainly if it goes above 7.6 the chlorine is not going to be effective uh, and so that's a very dangerous situation because if the chlorine is not effective then you could have bacteria uh, viruses still able to survive in that pool water uh, and so it's a, a bit of a problem if the if the pH level gets above the recommended range. So if it goes above 7.6, really people need to be um, get people out of the pool and correct the situation. Try and keep the uh, the pH level down to the bottom end of the range. So try and keep it down sort of uh, 7.2, 7.3. Um, and remember that the, the lower the pH level gets, the more effective the chlorine is going to be.